Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday meal prep. I'm so happy that you are joining me today. I hope that y'all are having a great weekend. If you are new around here, my name is Jennifer. I am 47. I've been doing WW for about three years or so now, and I prep my meals for the week on Sunday. So we don't really cook anything during the week unless there's little sides or something that we need to make to go along with whatever I prep. So I make two meals each week, and then we just alternate those Sunday night through Friday night. I get asked a lot of questions about that if we get bored with it. No, we do not we love it it makes our life so much simpler during the week we don't have to do any cooking and a lot of cleanup or anything like that so yeah so we have just been doing this and it's just kind of our routine it does take a little bit of work on Sundays and Ozzy is barking because Charlie ran to the store the cantaloupe was not good so he is running to Kroger to get another one like literally there was no right part in it it looked awful he cut it in half and that's all he did to it so he's taking that back and exchanging it for a better one and um, then we're gonna make our lunch and everything and then get started on meal prep also if you are new here go ahead and do all the things like subscribe uh, follow me over on Instagram join my Facebook group link down in the description box also if you are interested in a free month of Weight Watchers I have my link down there you'll get a free month and then I would as well also I will have a link down there for the cookware that I'm going to use today from Caraway my link is only good until October the 17th so if you want to check that out I would highly recommend it so far I have loved it I used it last weekend to prep this weekend I plan on using a couple of other pieces that I didn't use last week so anyway with all of that being said we are going to get into the video but first let me tell you what we are cooking today so I am going to have my scrum my scrambled eggs I'm going to call them scrambled eggs my eggs and bacon like I normally do last weekend I actually baked my eggs and I made breakfast sandwiches lesson learned on that I actually like the baked eggs so I'm actually going to just bake my eggs and then make my bacon as usual because that's always been one of my least favorite things to do and one thing that I hardly ever film is scrambling a huge batch of eggs to go Monday through Friday I don't make them for the weekend I just make five servings of them because I always make it fresh on the weekends so I'm gonna bake my eggs uh, and then I'm just gonna cut it into the five servings or six if I end up with six servings we'll see but regardless um, that was easier last week it did take like 45 minutes for the eggs to cook but I'm okay with that because I don't have to stand there and spend 30 minutes it literally takes like half hour trying to scramble enough eggs for five days so I learned a good lesson last week I did enjoy the breakfast sandwiches they were delicious Charlie liked his too uh, I like the Jimmy Dean turkey sausage I felt like they were a little on the small side like they were that big around uh, so the next time I try that I'm gonna try to find some that are a little bit skinnier and wider if that makes sense but uh, still we really enjoyed that breakfast last week so I'm gonna do my normal bacon and eggs but I am just gonna bake my eggs just like I did last week and then uh, cook my bacon in the microwave I always cook my bacon in the microwave on paper towels it always comes out perfectly crisp nice and flat it doesn't curl up or anything like that I love it highly recommend that then for one of our meals we are going to do chili I'm going to do that chef greenspan chili I actually think that it is a recipe that's in the WW app uh, not 100% sure about that but it's basically a zero point chili I'm going to use 99% lean ground turkey tomatoes black beans pinto beans I think it calls for some fat free fat free refried beans I'm leaving those out and I'm just going to add two cans of black beans instead it's not a huge fan of the canned refried beans I don't know what it is about them but regardless uh, the recipe is in there it takes like five diced bell peppers the red ones in there so Charlie's already diced those up yeah a couple of questions that I do get all the time is does Charlie still help me prep he does as you can see back here he has prepped all of this stuff uh, we really just stopped filming that because you know I kind of got some negative feedback about just using that as a filler to make the video longer or whatever so we just decided that we just wouldn't film it anymore so if that's something that y'all want to see then you can let me know I'll think about maybe throwing in a little bit of it but Charlie used to always film everything that he prepped and I would kind of do a speed clip so everybody could see how much work he really does because he really does the majority of the work doing that I have tried to make my videos a little bit shorter only film and show what is necessary for the meal prep videos so that they're not an hour long because I spend four hours in here cooking to be honest also along with that meal I'm gonna make my corn muffins that I've made a million times and then uh, what was my next meal uh, so I'm gonna do chicken in the air fryer we are just going to season up the chicken breast with that Kinder's 
salt, pepper, and garlic um, seasoning that I picked up at Costco a couple of weeks ago, and then probably some of that Nashville hot chicken seasoning as well. Give it a little spice, and then we're having baked sweet potatoes and then just some green beans from the can on the stove. We've really liked that combination. And then for dessert, I'm planning on making some pumpkin cream cheese swirl bars or something like that. I forget exactly where that recipe's from. I've had it printed out for a long time, but I've just never made it. But I did get the cream cheese to make it, and yeah, so we have a full menu ahead breakfast two meals and a dessert so yeah so let's just get right into it okay so we are going to get started by putting the green beans on I have a four cans of the Del Monte just regular cut green beans I'm going to put all four of these in this uh, Dutch oven this is another piece from the caraway set and then I'm gonna make my chili in this bigger pot because I'm afraid that this will not be big enough. So I thought it would be perfect for my green beans. And I just like to put them in and put just a little dash of olive oil. I don't even really count it because it's just a little drizzle and some salt and pepper and then just let them cook just for, I don't know, a few minutes. I'll let them get warm, I'll put the lid on We'll add a little salt and pepper. Obviously, everybody knows how to make green beans to your liking. Whatever you want to do. I pretty much just like it pretty simple. So, that's going to be it. And we're just going to let it kind of come to a boil and then turn it down and let them simmer for a little bit. And then, Charlie has actually already baked the sweet potatoes in the microwave, so those are done. Um, I'm going to get started on the chicken and then kind of turn that over to Charlie. And he's going to cook that in the Ninja Foodie here. So we're just going to air fry the chicken. I think it'll take like 12 minutes per side. I'm going to get all my seasonings out, get that breaded up. Here's my lid for my green beans. I probably need to do a little stir on it, but just wanted to show you the beautiful pot so let me get everything together for the chicken and then we'll be back okay so this is what I've decided to do for the chicken and sorry if it's loud but I do have the ninja foodie preheating just for five minutes which it should stop here in a second I've just put salt and pepper on my chicken breast and then in here is a cup of the panko breadcrumbs I actually used all that I had left hopefully I don't need any more if I do I do have some of the Italian seasoned breadcrumbs but um, I just wanted to use up these panko rolls the panko breadcrumbs and then I put like two tablespoons of the Kinder's seasoning blend which I picked this up at Costco a couple of weeks ago it's just salt pepper and garlic and then I put like one and a half tablespoons of the Nashville hot chicken in there so I'm just going to coat the outside of each chicken breast I'm going to cook it at 390 degrees air fried for about 12 minutes on each side and I'm going to hunt down Mr. Charlie because he's usually the one that does this so that I can get the chili going because um, I need to get that started as well. Okay, so I have two of them breaded and in here and we are just going to put it on. Oh, it says to shut it, forgot. You have to shut it. Air fryer, 390. And I'm gonna do 12 minutes and then I will flip it and cook it for 12 minutes on the other side as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get these other four chicken breasts breaded up. I think Charlie's outside doing something to the car. So I'm just gonna try to get this ready and try to keep my eye on it as I'm working on the chili. Okay, so I have my fruit and yogurt bowls ready. These will be my side to go along with my sandwich at lunch each day. All of that is zero points for me. My sandwich ends up to be about four points. And then I have my bacon ready. Like I said, I like to cook it in the microwave. It always turns out perfect flat crispy I like it really crispy and then I just store it in the fridge in this paper towel in a plastic ziploc bag and I have my eggs in the oven they are not quite done yet but then I will just divide them between five containers and hopefully I like that this week because it's so much easier cooking in the oven all right I am getting ready to start on this uh, let's see here what it's called turkey chili by Chef Eric Greenspan, if that will focus. Okay, there we go. Turkey Chili by Chef Eric Greenspan. Yeah. So this is in the WW app. It Mine does come out to one point, but I also earned two points from all of the vegetables in there, so it's pretty much a zero point meal. But here are all of the ingredients. We've got some diced red peppers. We're gonna start out by sauteing those along with the jalapenos and also the onion if you use the onion y'all know that we don't usually use onion 
Then we're gonna add in the ground turkey. I have two pounds of the lean ground turkey here. And we're gonna do some chili powder, some ground cumin. And then we have three cans of the diced fire roasted tomatoes and two cans of black beans. And then I think one can is pinto beans back here. And those will all be drained and rinsed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with these peppers and jalapenos. I need to change out my battery too. And then I need about half a cup of cilantro. So I need to get that chopped up as well. But uh, I will be back in just a minute getting everything going so this chili can simmer and blend all of the seasonings and everything together good. Okay, so we're going in with our diced bell peppers and our diced jalapeno. And we will be back once that is sauteed and get the turkey and everything in there. Okay, so now I have the ground turkey in here. I'm just gonna get this mixed up good and we are gonna go ahead and add in the cumin and the chili powder. We're probably gonna do about a tablespoon of cumin and two or three tablespoons of chili powder and then some salt and pepper. So it says four pinches of salt. We're just going to sprinkle some in there. And then it says four or five pinches of ground cumin or to taste, y'all know I love ground cumin. So we're just gonna go in with a full tablespoon. And then it calls for two tablespoons of chili powder. There we go. Now we're just going to let this cook until the turkey is brown. I'm gonna get my beans drained and rinsed, my tomatoes open, and then this will just about be done. Okay, we are back. I think the turkey is brown good. Sorry if that is steaming up the camera. We are ready to add in all of the other ingredients except for the cilantro that will really just be used as a garnish. I'm probably just gonna set it to the side for myself because Charlie really doesn't like it. That is perfectly fine. So we are gonna go ahead and go in with everything else. So we have half a cup of water and then I have my two cans of black beans and my can of pinto beans drained and rinsed. And then we're going in with our three cans of the fire roasted tomatoes. There's one, two, and three. And I'm just gonna give this a good stir and let this simmer for several minutes and I think that this will be done. I need to double check and make sure I've got everything in there. It's looking delicious, y'all. For basically zero points, I mean it is one point, but then you earn two points for eating it, so it's a win. And we've been having some nice cool evenings, so it is definitely chilly season here in Tennessee. Okay, here is our chicken and green beans. Again, the sweet potatoes, we already just baked those in the microwave. They are literally just in a bowl. We will take them out and warm them up for like three minutes on the nights that we eat them. And this will be a delicious meal. It's a great little combination. So now we just need to plate up our chili and make our corn muffins and our pumpkin bars. Alrighty, here is the chili. It is looking and smelling delicious. Side note, Charlie did add a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce in there to spice it up a little bit. So don't be afraid to um, add something extra if you think it needs it. Um, he used to always be the one to make chili. So anytime I make chili, I will let him taste test it and, you know, add a little extra in there. Of course, uh, hot sauce is what he chose today. So I'm assuming it's gonna be nice and spicy and will pair well with our sweet corn muffins that we're gonna have. All right, I'm getting ready to make my corn muffins. I have one and a half cups of self-rising cornmeal. And this is the cornmeal that I prefer to use. You can use just the regular self-rising cornmeal, but I do think that this yellow hot rise taste better. And there's something that makes them just kind of golden and crispy, I don't know, but this one is the one that I prefer. But any self rising cornmeal will work. So I have one and a half cups of that. I'm gonna use one and a half cans of the cream style corn. And then I'm going to use three tablespoons of egg whites. So that's it, I'm gonna mix it together, put them in here. And we will show you that here in just one, two, three. Okay guys, there they are. They're ready to go in the oven. I'm gonna bake them 400 degrees for 12 minutes and then I will put them up on the top rack and broil them just for a couple of minutes to get them nice and crispy and uh, they will be perfect. Alrighty, here are the corn muffins fresh out of the oven, looking nice and toasty, nice and golden. That's what I love. I cooked them for 12 minutes and then of course broiled them like I said I would until, I just like to do it until they're kind of, you know, getting brown around the edges there. You don't wanna leave them in too long. But 
they're looking delicious now all we have left to do is fix the pumpkin bars okay i am ready to get started on the one sheet pan pumpkin bars this is from the pound dropper i printed this recipe off a long time ago and i've just never made it uh i don't think that it's going to be too difficult basically we're going to need two cups of all-purpose flour so i did get the gold medal from kroger yesterday we need one teaspoon of baking soda two teaspoons of baking powder, uh, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, and then three-fourths of a cup of sugar substitute. She says she actually uses the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener. Y'all know I use this all the time. This is the one thing I don't have is a fourth a teaspoon of ground cloves. So I think I'm just going to use some pumpkin pie spice. I do have some nutmeg, but for some reason I thought I had ground cloves. I don't. It's a fourth of a teaspoon. And actually this little thing is almost empty. This is left from last year and I did get another one. So I might just throw in what's left of that. I don't think it will hurt. A cup of unsweetened applesauce. I have two of these over here. I don't know. I'm going to measure it out. I don't know if this is half a cup or a cup. But we'll see if I need both of them. A can of 100% pure pumpkin. And then four eggs, lightly beaten. So that is the ingredients for the bars. And then for the cream cheese swirl, you need an 8-ounce block of a reduced-fat cream cheese softened at room temperature. This has actually been sitting out for a while. Two tablespoons of either skim milk or unsweetened almond milk. I need to get the milk out. We're also going to need another third cup of the monk fruit sweetener and one more egg. That will make the swirl. So I'm going to kind of get everything together. I think basically I need to preheat the oven to 350. Uh, I'm going to use this big pink cookie sheet. I set it over here out of the way. Um, it says to use a 10 by 15 or 18 by 13. This is a 17 by 12. So I think that's probably about as close as I'm going to get to those measurements. And then we're basically going to combine flour, baking soda powder, uh, baking powder, salt, cinnamon, sugar substitute, and cloves. Stir all of that. And then we're going to add in the eggs, the pumpkin, and the unsweetened applesauce. And then we're going to put that in the baking sheet. And then in a separate bowl, we'll make the cream cheese mixture. And then we will, uh you know swirl it into the batter so hopefully it turns out pretty and it bakes for about 25 to 30 minutes you're supposed to cut it into 36 bars if you want it to be one point let me get everything kind of measured out and get started and yeah hopefully this doesn't take that long okay so i have two cups of all-purpose flour i'm going to go in with that okay we're going to go in with one teaspoon of baking soda we're going to do two teaspoons of baking powder it's one two half a teaspoon of salt uh, the ground cloves, which I am just going to use the rest of this pumpkin pie spice. There's not that much in there. We're making pumpkin bars, so should work fine. We need three-fourths a cup of the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener. Okay, that's three-fourths of a cup of that. And put that in. Stir until well combined. Okay, so I have that mixed well. I know you can't really see it because it's about the same color as the bowl. But now we are ready to go in with the wet ingredients. So we're going to add in the eggs. So I went ahead and cracked my four eggs in here. Slightly beaten like it says. And then we have one cup of unsweetened applesauce, which was two of those little ones. I thought that they were just a half cup, but wanted to make sure. And then we're going to go in with our can of pumpkin. Okay, so we have our eggs, pumpkin, and unsweetened applesauce in there. And so that is all to make the batter. And then we just need to make the cream cheese topping that we're going to swirl into it. Okay, here's what my mixture is looking like. I think it is ready to put in my pan. I'm going to just spray it with the Baker's Spray, the Pam, or you can use the Baker's Joy. And we're just going to pour the whole batter into this pan and spread it out. It does say if you want to make them thicker, you can. It would just increase the points probably you would get less bars okay so there's my mixture i tried to spread it as evenly as i could i'm going to set this to the side and we're going to make the cream cheese to swirl into it and then it'll be ready to throw in the oven okay so in the bowl i have my one egg i'm going to go ahead and add in my cream cheese which is pretty soft it's been sitting out for a while and this kitchen kind of got warm today with everything going at one time Okay, so I have a third of a cup of the monk fruit sweetener, and I'm also going to add in two tablespoons of just this Califia Farms unsweetened almond milk that I always use, or you can use skim milk. Okay, so I have everything in here now. We are just going to stir this up until it is nice and smooth. 
I'm gonna have to get my whisk out, we'll see. Okay, we are back. We have whisked this until it is nice and smooth and no lumps. I did end up getting my whisk out. Now it says to just pour it over the batter and then we're gonna take a knife and kind of swirl it through. So hopefully this works good. So let's see if I can do a good little swirl here. I'll kind of smooth it back out after I swirl in the cream cheese. It also says that it is the same amount of points with or without the cream cheese. So, I mean, why wouldn't you want to do the cream cheese? But if you don't want to fool with it, you could probably use this and make muffins or whatever. Okay, wish me luck that these turn out good. They're going in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, here are my pumpkin swirl bar, my pumpkin swirl bars fresh out of the oven. I cannot say that. Uh, I think they are done. I just put them in for the 25 minutes. I'm hoping that they are good. I probably could have done a better job on my swirl, but that's not the important part. The important part will be the taste. So we will let you know. I'm going to try to cut these into 36 squares or rectangles or whatever. Then they will be one point each. But the cream cheese icing tasted delicious whenever I swirled it in there. I did have me a little taste test of that. So uh, I'm looking forward to eating these this week. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's meal prep video. Uh, I think that I have completed another successful prep. I hope that you try some of these meals. I hope that uh, these pumpkin bars are delicious this week. Um, the chili was delicious the one other time that I know that I've made it. And then, of course, y'all know we love the sweet potatoes, green beans, and chicken. So be sure to like, follow, subscribe all of that good stuff follow me over on instagram join my facebook group links are all down in the description box i love you guys and i will see you all in the next video Mwah.